So now we're going to get into a discussion of two terms. One is diffusion and the other one is effusion, um, effusion, diffusion and effusion. All right, so let's talk about diffusion first and we won't spend much time on diffusion. Um, let's talk about what the definition of diffusion is. Diffusion is a process by which one substance mixes with another one or more than one substances as a result of the translational motion of molecules. Now, what you'll find is that the diffusion of gases is much slower than would be predicted by the molecular speed equation that I showed you earlier. And that is due to the fact that you'll have frequent collisions between the molecules of different substances. So therefore, we cannot use the equation I gave you earlier, the equation for the root mean squared speed, to do any calculation or comparison between gas molecules when it comes to one substance mixing with another one because the equations that I gave you earlier is assuming that the molecules are not colliding with each other and hindering each other, all right? And um, a definition here that I need to introduce here is that the average distance a molecule travels between the collision is called its mean free path, all right? And that is not taken into account when it comes to using the equations for calculating the root mean squared speed. So we won't be spending much time talking about diffusion, excepting that we'll talk about diffusion as it relates to a phenomenon that we're going to describe here. Now, what you see here on the screen is a picture of two bottles containing two different solutions. One is containing concentrated hydrochloric acid on the left, and the one on the right contains concentrated ammonium hydroxide, all right? Now, you'll notice that, if you look at it carefully, you'll see that there's a kind of smoky substance that is formed at the mouth of the solution, of the bottle containing the solution of the hydrochloric acid. And that substance is as a result of the reaction of two gases. Because what happens is that these concentrated solutions, because they are concentrated, they will spontaneously produce um, gases in the case of hydrochloric acid, above the surface of that solution, it's going to produce hydrogen chloride gas. Formula is HCl gas. And above the solution of ammonium hydroxide, you're going to have produced ammonia gas. So what's going to happen is that these two gases are going to react to form ammonium chloride which is a solid, all right? Now, what is happening in this case is that this smoky material is actually the ammonium chloride formed when these two gases are in contact with each other. And it turns out that that substance is formed nowhere near the bottle containing the ammonium hydroxide, but it is formed at the mouth of the bottle that contains the hydrochloric acid. Now, this begs the question, why does that happen? Well, the reason why that happens is because the ammonia molecule, being the lighter molecule, will travel at a faster rate compared to the hydrogen chloride molecule. If you look at the molar masses of ammonia and hydrogen chloride, ammonia has a molar mass of approximately 17 grams per mole, right? While hydrogen chloride has a molar mass of about 36.5 grams per mole, right? So what that means is that the ammonia molecule will travel at a faster rate compared to a faster speed compared to the hydrogen chloride molecule. So that means that when they meet, they will meet closer to the source of the hydrogen chloride molecule, which would be the solution of hydrochloric acid. And that is the reason why you have this smoky material, which is the ammonium chloride, formed at the mouth of the bottle containing the hydrochloric acid. So that basically explains why that happens, all right? So we understand that based on the fact that the ammonia molecule is the lighter of the two. All right, so, um, okay, so this is basically stating what I just said. The lighter ammonia molecules move faster, and diffuse faster than the heavier HCl molecules and therefore will come into contact closer to the source of the hydrogen chloride molecule and therefore the material, the ammonium chloride, will be formed at the mouth of the bottle of the hydrochloric acid. Okay, so 
The next topic we're going to talk about is effusion, right? We just talked about diffusion, and now we're going to talk about effusion. And more specifically, we're going to talk about Graham's law of effusion. So basically, effusion is a process in which a gas escapes from its container through a tiny hole into a vacuum, all right? So if you imagine you have two gases in this particular container here, and they're escaping through the hole right here um, into a vacuum, that's what effusion is all about. Now in this case, we have the heavier molecules and the lighter molecules in the same container. And because um, of what we learned about before, as far as the relationship between the average speeds and the size or the mass of the molecule, you'd expect that the lighter molecules will effuse more faster or effuse more faster compared to the heavier molecules, right? So therefore, the heavier molecules will move more slowly as stated here. And therefore, after some time, what you'll find is that the lighter molecules, there'll be fewer of them left inside the container and more of the heavier molecules left in the container, all right? And that's what Graham's law is all about. It's comparing basically the rate of effusion as it relates to the molar mass. Um, so basically, we can derive Graham's law based on the equation I showed you before. So remember, this term here represents the root mean squared speed of gas molecule one, of gas one, and the bottom one here represents the root mean squared speed for gas molecule two. So if you were to compare rate of effusion of gas one to gas two, you divide this by this, excuse me, the three RTs will cancel out, so therefore you'll be left with this equation, where the rate of gas one divided by the rate of effusion of gas two is equal to the square root of the molar mass of gas two divided by the molar mass of gas one. So basically this is what Graham's law is saying. Graham's law is saying that the rate of effusion of gas molecules is inversely proportional to the square root of their molar masses at a fixed temperature. So the temperature would have to be the same for both gases if we're comparing the rates of effusion and to establish Graham's law, all right? So that's what Graham's law is all about. Okay, so what we're gonna do in the next video is look at a couple of example, examples of Graham's law in problem solving exercises. So until next time. Mm -hmm.